In mid-October of 2021, Space UK uploaded his verification video for Slaughterhouse, the new top one extreme demon. Little did the community know, around 10 months prior, Space UK started hacking Geometry Dash after a fail at 98% on the Golden, and every successive achievement was indeed hacked. It wouldn't be until April of 2023 that Space UK would be exposed as the pathological liar he truly was. This is a story we're all familiar with by now. I mean, it's been a few months since Space UK was exposed. But what if he didn't hack? What would have happened to the demons list? What would the community look like today? If Space UK had just decided to quit the game after getting 98% on the Golden, what would have happened after? In today's video, we're going to theorize on what could have happened, and how things could have gone down had Space never decided to hack the game. A few disclaimers before we start. Obviously, this isn't 100% accurate, there's just tons of stuff that probably would have happened that could not be possibly predicted. I mean, it's an alternate history video, obviously we'll never know if I'm 100% right. This is just my best guess based off of stuff that I know. Feel free to leave your own objections in the comments if you think something else would have happened. The damage that Space UK's hacked career had on the community is somewhat incalculable in that there are tons of players that would have had more motivation to try to beat top player if he hadn't been hacking. So again, this is sort of like a best estimate sort of thing. So with that out of the way, if you liked today's video, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton and you'll see more videos like this. Feel free to comment down below what you think would have happened, and let's get into the video. So while Space UK started to gain popularity and prominence in the community before his Slaughterhouse verification, the Slaughterhouse verification was very much the first big defining moment of his career. As is the case with a lot of top players, they really start to become household names once they've verified a top one. So pretty much the only thing that would change before Slaughterhouse's verification would be some other top players would get a little bit more recognition. But things really start to differ when Space first claimed to have passed River from Zero. According to Ice Cave, Doggy and Zamasu would have verified it most likely as they had the most progress and around half the race quit when Space K passed River from Zero. Zamasu most likely having the best legitimate run at the time. So this is where things start to get really theoretical. In my personal opinion, I do think that Doggy would have ended up verifying the level, even though Zamasu most likely had more progress at at the time. The reason I think this is that Doggy very much had a personal connection with the level, and has since proven himself to have a lot of skill in the game even under current standards with levels such as Acheron. And while Zamasu does have some certainly impressive completions such as Parabola and Tartarus, Doggy simply most likely just has more drive and more skill. However, I don't think Doggy would have verified Slaughterhouse for quite some time, so we'll get back to this later. In the meantime, in the timeline that we know, Firework was verified roughly a week after Slaughterhouse. Can't believe I just said the word timeline in a Geometry Dash video, whatever. Which would have completely cemented Firework as a true top 1 instead of being top 1 for 18 seconds and then later getting retconned to be top 1 for a couple months. The reason I think Firework would have been verified pretty much on the same day is because the vast majority of Slaughterhouse's fame was gained after its verification. While a good number of people certainly knew about the level, a lot of its infamy has come as a result of its verification and placement at number 1. Before Slaughterhouse was verified, the new top 1 discussion of who would dethrone Tartarus was mostly focused around three levels. Arcturus, Firework, and Abyss of Darkness. By this point, Arcturus had been verified for a few months, and Abyss of Darkness and Firework were sort of in somewhat of a race. Slaughterhouse essentially came out of nowhere, and after Slaughterhouse and Firework were verified, Rob Tob raided Arcturus, Firework, and Slaughterhouse all on the same day. One of the leading theories at the time for why this was, was that Slaughterhouse and Arcturus weren't really rate-worthy, at least not as much as Firework was, so Rob Tob was waiting for Firework to be verified in order to rate all three of the levels. The motivation behind this would be that Rob Tob would want a really well-decorated top 1 to sort of represent the game, and while that makes sense, I'm not entirely sure how true that is. I do think Slaughterhouse would have been rated upon release regardless, but Arcturus was much more contested on whether it was harder or easier than Tartarus in the first place. So it's possible that in this timeline, Arcturus wouldn't have even been raided, which doesn't really affect much down the line, but I thought it'd at least be something worth mentioning, because maybe Speedy Muffin wouldn't have a career. But regardless, Firework would be raided, placed at number one, and Trick would basically be cemented as the new top player. I do think Trick would have more motivation for Geometry Dash if this were to happen, because he had worked very hard on Firework, and it would now be rightfully top one. So it might even be possible that he would have picked up Slaughterhouse's verification, although I do think that this is unlikely. Because Firework would have ended up being leveled to truly dethrone Tartarus, it would have gained a lot more notoriety within the community, simply just because it had dethroned the longest running top 1 in the game. So in my opinion, even though Slaughterhouse would have most likely been verified a few months later, it wouldn't have had the same effect on the community, so levels like Cosmos and Slaughterhouse remakes as a whole would most likely not really exist, or at least wouldn't be as prevalent. It's possible Firework remakes might have become a thing, although that style is much harder to recreate. 
Regardless, I don't think the Terra Team's Cosmos would have manifested at all. I should also note that while Hard Machine was verified before Firework or Slaughterhouse, Firework, Slaughterhouse, and Arcturus were all added above the level originally, which leads me to believe that it would have suffered a similar fate as it did in our timeline, even if Slaughterhouse hadn't been verified at the time. So now we're going to get to the point where a lot of you might disagree with me on this. In the true timeline, Doggy verified Slaughterhouse on December 21st, 2021, believing that he had gone first victor, and Diamond verified Sagoop and Circles on December 29th, 2021. So, if we went by those rules alone, Slaughterhouse would have been top one for about just over a week, and then Sagoop and Circles would have taken the throne for a little bit, and then eventually passed it back to Slaughterhouse. I don't think this is what would have happened. Verifying a level is a lot harder than getting first victor simply because of a mental game. Beating something that no one else has beaten before, even if it's just like an enter extreme, is much more difficult and the pressure is much more real, I guess I should say intense, during verification as opposed to getting first or second victor. As for Diamond's verification of Sakoop and Circles, I think it would have most likely been pretty much unaffected by Slaughterhouse not being verified at this point, because the focus seemed to be more on verifying this old impossible level, as opposed to making a new top one that was harder than Slaughterhouse, or Firework or whatever was top one at the time. So most likely, Firework would have been top one for a few months before Sukup and Circles would have been placed on the list at number one and carried the top one spot until Doggy would have verified Slaughterhouse sometime in early 2022. I do think that if this were to happen, that Slaughterhouse would have been recognized as a top one far faster than it was in our timeline, because so much of Slaughterhouse's intensity comes from the fact you have no idea what the hell is going on in the level, whereas by the time Doggy would have most likely verified Slaughterhouse in this timeline, Sukupa Circles would have been out for a decent amount of time, and also it's still above Sukupa Circles on the list today, so... Yeah, it probably would end up taking the top one spot eventually. My guess is that Slaughterhouse would have most likely been verified sometime in January or February, and that after taking the top one spot, it would truly cement Doggy as, again, a top player, just like Fireworks Verification did with Trick. It is crazy to think that most likely Trick and Doggy would have been less criminally underrated as players if Space K hadn't hacked, because most likely both of them would have verified their own top ones, which is kind of like the golden ticket in this community, like, let's be real. It's kind of like a rite of passage with top players at this point to, like, verify their own top one. So a quick recap up until now. In October of 2021, Firework is placed at number one on the Demons list, cementing Trick's legacy and possibly Arcturus isn't rated, Hard Machine would most likely still get violated, and Sukup and Circles would later be verified as the next top one in late December, until Doggy verifies Slaughterhouse sometime in January or February of the following year. So there's one level I mentioned before that's been pretty quiet up until now, and that level is Abyss of Darkness. The history of Abyss of Darkness is quite interesting. A lot of people like to just blindly hate on the level today, and while I do think that is completely justified, there was a time where the level was pretty well respected. After Dill's Thick got 98 twice and subsequently dropped the level, XN hosted a admittedly pretty rushed redecoration of the level. Firework was seen as its main opponent to the number one spot on the demon list, but after Slaughterhouse and Firework were verified, AOD was kind of forgotten about. The redecoration had been finished, but there wasn't too much progress made on the level until around March. One of the first players to start making loads of progress was Trick. Now here's where things get tricky. No pun intended. Now, I mentioned earlier that Trick's motivation for the game would have most likely been higher given that the Firework, the level that he had worked pretty hard on, was top one. In our timeline, Trick started making very fast progress in March. Before Crisis, Cursed, Zanny, and a few other top players joined in on the race, with Cursed eventually prevailing. In this timeline, I think Trick would have actually been the one to verify the level. You see, in our timeline, Space K claimed to be the first victor of Abyss of Darkness, and Trick didn't actually end up beating Abyss of Darkness until August of 2022, which was months after the verification. But with Space K completely out of the equation, I think Trick would have most likely had more motivation to start progress on Abyss of Darkness earlier, and therefore would have verified it as the new top one, roughly around the same time that Curse did in our timeline. With the severe boost in motivation of having very verified a previous top one, the offer to verify that top one's most serious rival from a few months before would have probably been an offer too good to refuse. I also think Trick lost a lot of his motivation with the level after Cursed verified it, so I don't think it would have actually taken him too long to verify the level at all. So I do think that sometime around March or maybe even as late as April, Trick would have verified Abyss of Darkness as a new top one. I'm not entirely sure how things would have gone after the verification. Most likely Cursed would have tried for first victor and probably gotten it, considering that Spacegate didn't exist and Zoink well, we'll talk about Zoink in a second. I do think things would have panned out pretty similarly to how they did in our timeline, in that it wouldn't have been rated for a little bit before RobTab was like, fine, you idiots, I'll rate it, and then you're not gonna like it as your new top one. And then that's exactly what happened. Everyone hated the level after the hype died down. I do think that would have stayed the same. It's just that Trick would have verified it, Chris would have gone first victor, 
and Abyss of Darkness might have kept its top one spot considering that it's possible that Doggy would have nerfed Slaughterhouse a bit. And while I do disagree with this point, I still thought I'd bring it up. The reason I disagree is because I think Doggy's commitment to the level would have made it so that he wouldn't have nerfed it very much. So for that reason, and somewhat for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say that Slaughterhouse regains its top spot eventually, around the same time as it did in our timeline. If you disagree with it, that's fine. You can just mentally swap those two on the list, as it doesn't really affect much going forward. So now let's talk about Zoink. According to Zoink, they most likely would have beaten Firework as it would have been top one, but most likely wouldn't have grinded the list like they did, which is why I didn't include them in the AOD race. They also would have most likely not have done Acheron or Avernus. Keep that in mind for later. So going into the next few months, Zoink is pretty much completely out of the equation. Now we get into the next big verification, Silent Club Step. Silent Clubstep started to become more of a race because of the hype surrounding Vision and Paco's progress on the level, which is why lots of top players started picking at the level and seeing what they could do. In our timeline, Trick completed Silent Clubstep on May 8th, 2023, stating the year-long journey has finally come to an end, also proclaiming he is the unluckiest victor. He also places it above AOD and Slaughterhouse. I do think most likely that Vision and Paco's progress on Silent Clubstep wouldn't have been affected much by what was going on with the Demons list, and Trick probably would have most likely started his progress around the same time that he did in our timeline. However, with the extra boost of confidence that comes with verifying two top ones, Trick might have made faster progress on the level. However, considering that it did take him a whole year, I do think that Paco would have still ended up verifying the level, just like in our timeline. Oh yeah, also the cursed 0.9 hitbox drama would have most likely never happened, just because it was most likely such a product of circumstance that it wouldn't have been recreated in this timeline, so I don't know, it has like no relevance to anything, I just thought I'd point it out because it's kind of funny. But while Paco would have most likely still verified Silent Club Step, Trick would have most likely gotten first or second victor a lot quicker than he did in our timeline, and therefore would have been more likely to agree that it was a new top one, just like Paco said originally. So I believe Silent Club Step would have most likely been a top one in this timeline. Especially because when I reached out to Zoink, he stated he would have most likely never done Acheron or Avernus, meaning that the version of Acheron that would have most likely been verified would have been one Alpha Helix's version, which is significantly easier. So moving into things towards the end of 2022, most likely things would have felt a lot different. Acheron would have most likely been verified as a top three. Silent Club Step would have been the reigning top one, with maybe some additional controversy between AOD and Slaughterhouse, bickering for a higher spot in the top five. And entire trends like the Slaughterhouse trend would have most likely been at least a lot less prevalent, if not non-existent. And while I didn't mention this before, I do think that Trick would have most likely won the best GD player award in both 2021 and 2022. However, there is a possibility that Doggy could have verified Silent Club Step, so it's possible that either Doggy or maybe even Paco would have won the 2022 award, but from here it becomes almost impossible to predict anything else. The one last thing I would probably be pretty definite on is that Avernus would have been verified by Trick, because I think Trick would have been seen as like the token top one player, like most likely at this point he would have gone for the entire list. I mean, maybe he wouldn't have, but he had verified at this point Firework and Abyss of Darkness, at least, so I do think that Pocky Windfish would have tried to get him to verify Avernus. Avernus was very much just made as like a random bullshit go sort of thing and was just trying to be as hard as possible with all types of artificial difficulty like fixed hitboxes. So I do think Avernus would have ended up turning out maybe a bit better, maybe even a bit easier as it wouldn't have had to compete with Acheron, but I think Trick's too much of a good person to let that pile of garbage be top one. It's really interesting to see how much Space UK really affected this community. There's so much discussion around like, oh, well, Space UK hacked and therefore gave people more motivation to become better players. Well, on a broad scale, I do think that's true. We don't always remember the other top players that otherwise would have taken the number one spot and most likely would have had more motivation to drive forward. And while I do think Space UK like lifted the difficulty ceiling pretty high, those other players that he unfairly stole accomplishments from most likely would have had the motivation to step in. I mean, hey, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm overestimating Trick, maybe I'm overestimating Doggy, but that doesn't change the fact that Space Case hacking was wrong and should not be taken lightly. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, all of this is just for fun. Obviously, I don't know 100% what would have happened if Space Gay had never hacked the game. If you think I was wrong on something, or there is another thing that I didn't mention, feel free to leave your objections and opinions in the comments below. Just try to be respectful. The 10k special is coming out pretty soon. I know I've been saying that for a while, but like, I finally got around to doing it, so... That's coming soon, and I'm bringing back the Ranking Your Stupid Opinion series. That, that's gonna be fun. I also just recently verified Wavix Club, an extreme demon named after my Discord server. It's not meant to be rated, it's just a fun side project. The link to my Discord server and the verification video with the ID are both in the description. 
And um, yeah, I think that's everything. Please remember to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.